And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Discover Lands Unknown. Now this game got an entirely ton of buzz and hype when it was announced on the heels of Keyforge. Because Keyforge was announced at Gen Con 2018 as the first unique game where every deck of Keyforge in the world would be different from every other deck. Discover Lands Unknown is the same thing. Every board game of Discover Lands Unknown is unique. It says so on the box itself. So, a couple things going into this review. First of all, this is the only version of Discover Lands Unknown that I have played. I have seen another copy of it, glanced over a little bit when someone else was playing it, but I haven't put a lot of uh, detail into looking at multiple copies of this. So I'm only going off this copy, but I think that's important to do so because if you go to the store, you can only buy well, I mean, you could buy multiple copies, but you probably aren't going to. You just want to buy one copy. Now, I know that there are multiple types of terrain that exist in this. I think there's six different types of terrain. In a box, you will get only two of them. In my particular game, I got polar uh, and desert terrains. There are also 36 different characters in the game, and you will get 12 of those characters, and you'll see some of those. Now, because of the nature of this game, there's spoilers involved to some degree, kind of, sort of. Like, I might show you a card and you would say, oh, i never seen that card before. And that's right, you'll be able to go from game to game. There's a chance that we have the same cards in our game, but there's a chance that we don't. I mean, a good chance at that point. So I'm going to try to not show a lot of what's in this game, but there are parts of it I'm just going to have to show so you can understand how the game works. That's all there is to it. If you don't want to know anything about this game, well, then uh, you, you just you probably should turn off the video at this point in time and just go get a copy and try it out. But I'm going to not try to spoil it. I'm just going to try to go over this. This is a discovery game, it's called. Although I will say that the cover here, I think, is a bit of a misnomer. This cover here has this person who is, they look like they're hopeful and eager and going out to discover things. That's not really the way it is. It's more like you were uh, dumped into a terrain and you're just trying to survive with a group of castaways. Um, it is a adventure game. It's cooperative-ish. Well, you know what? Better than anything else, let me show you. I mentioned there was two types of terrain. So here I have the terrain reference sheets. So I have desert terrain and snowy mountain terrain. This one is for scenarios one, two, and five. This is for scenarios three, four, and five. You'll notice five on both of them because five is actually not a scenario that comes with the game. It's just a way to continue to play the game afterwards in a full on competitive head to head game. Each person is going to have a character in each scenario, and you'll pick from some various characters, and I don't want to show too many of them, but this kind of gives you an idea of who the character is, and they basically have a special ability. So these are four of the different characters in the game, and you can discover more as you go through and play them. You'll have a piece, and you'll start here on the board for each of the scenarios, and this isn't spoiling anything, it shows you the desert map terrain. It shows you that the, they're numbered, and so you'll put some different numbers on different things. You will have uh, a compass that you'll put here. Occasionally you need to randomly determine a direction something goes in, and so that's uh, next to the board to kind of show where different things are. And it gives you some background here, and it tells you what cards, the box will come with several different cards, to use in this particular campaign. Now, there's two scenarios in the game. Those scenarios are going to be based around scenario cards. So this is, um, this is a scenario card here. So we have scenarios one and two and things like that. And you're going to pick scenario one and play stage one of that scenario until you get through with that scenario. And then you will go to the next scenario. And each scenario will tell you different things that you need to do. So, for example, in this scenario, I'm trying not to spoil too much of the text for you, um, but in this scenario, when a three map tile is revealed, place a counter in this card. When there are a number of counters in this card equal to number of players in the game, advance to stage two. And then you would go to stage two and see what that does. So players have their own player board here, and this keeps track of your life. You start with four health, and if you ever take your fourth damage, you are dead and eliminated from the game. There are different kinds of damage you can take. 
from hunger, from thirst, from poison and physical damage. All the hunger can be cured by getting food. Uh, this can be cured by getting drinking water. This can be cured by medicine, but if you take physical damage, there is no way to cure it. And if you have three wounds and you take a fourth one, you're dead. You also have stamina and you'll be getting stamina every turn and you're basically using stamina as actions. You'll be moving around the board and the different types of terrain that are on the board will cost a certain number of stamina to move in as on the reference sheet. And then you'll have a bunch of different actions. Moving is an action. Uh, you can explore and discover a new tile where you'll flip it over and find different things in that tile. Sometimes you'll find this where a token would be put here. This is likely a resource. And this is a special area that when you go there and explore that, you will go through the deck and find that particular card, card 14, and you will read that card and see what it says. And I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to spoil things too much. And so as time goes by, you will be exploring these different areas and finding things of great note. Sometimes you'll find different enemies that will come on and you'll have to fight an enemy. So here's an example of an enemy. This is a mountain lion. And when you fight a mountain lion, um, you are going to be rolling two dice for combat in this game. You're going to be trying to roll equal to or higher than the number of the gray one here to do a damage to them. And then if you roll equal to or higher than the red number, they will do a damage to you, a physical damage to you. And there are different tokens that you can use to re-roll. And as the game goes by, you'll be able to pick up weapons. In fact, each player has three cards where if they're within two uh, distance from you, they can use a card to help you roll dice and work with you. Players will also have project cards where if you get a certain number of resources, you can take this card and use it and you'll get card 96. So you'll go through the deck here, card 96, which is not a spoiler here at all. Card number 96 is going to be a pickaxe. And this will give you plus one in your combat rolls and it gives you a chance to just take a stone resource. There's lots of different resources you'll be collecting. You're especially looking for wells and things to find water. After everyone has taken their actions on any given turn, you will be drawing the top card from this deck here. You'll start with these blue cards, which are nice card, nicer cards and red cards. And this card will basically tell you you need to spend food or water or something or you take damage. Everyone will get a certain amount of stamina and that some random events will happen. Often you'll want to be near fire or near each other to survive these and these events will get worse and worse as time goes by. Sometimes they will cause you to draw cards from these piles. This one's, these are for the two different decks in the game that can just cause like a negative thing that will happen to you and some sort of bad event. Eventually, you're going to find your way to finishing the last stage of the scenario. If you beat it, you will then start the second scenario and go through that, the third scenario, the fourth scenario. The fifth scenario is really just where you're going to be running around and attacking each other. So again, players will be taking a bunch of actions on their turn, moving around, gathering resources, scouting out new territories, investigating these landmark spots that they find there, trading with each other, cooking meat, starting fires. Um, if someone dies, you can loot their bodies, things like that. And eventually you will win or lose. So there's another set here. You can see these are the snowy mountain tiles. You have the different player tokens for each board. And in this game, all the cards come with QR codes. So from what I understand, card you know 61 in my game may be different than card 61 in your game. I don't know. There's not a ton of art on these cards, as you can see here in the mountain lion. This is kind of an example of the art you'll find as you go through and do different things, or as you build the different items that you'll have these different projects you put together. You can see the art is a little stark here. The art for the characters, I really like this art a lot. Um, I wish there was more of this art in the game. And the art of the board looks okay. We did run into some problems, like for example, I thought, you know, here moving into a sand dune costs two, moving in regular sand costs one. Is this a sand dune? I think it is. It's partially in there. Is this a sand dune? Because it looks like it's part of the same thing. Uh, I mean, they made it nice, but it was not the clearest what parts were sand dunes and what not. I, we kind of just used our best guessing on that. These are nice thick tiles. The different tokens are pretty easy to tell apart. And there's lots of different tokens, every token you need in the game. But you are going to have to keep them all separate. These are, I'm not real keen on these. 
Uh, the plastic, they just don't seem to match the rest of the game. That's not a really big deal. These work really well. I like the backs of these and they're easy to understand. All the car quality is good. So for the most part, the quality of this game is well done. Games do not exist in a vacuum. And unfortunately, Discover Lands Unknown is going to be compared to a very popular game that already exists called Seventh Continent. Because Seventh Continent also has to go around and exploring and finding cards with numbers on them. Discover even cribs one of the coolest mechanisms from Seventh Continent where maybe you find, for example, a key. And this key says, if you ever find a card that says door on it, instead of drawing the number it tells you to draw, draw one that's three higher. Well, that's kind of cool. That means if you have the key in the door. And that's a neat aspect. That is straight out of Seventh Continent, and it's in this game. This game has a little bit of that Tintin artwork in it. It has this whole cool story, and it has this unique game system. So let's talk about the unique game part of this first. I know a lot of people are really down on Fantasy Flight for doing this. I don't think the unique thing is bad. I think it's a cool idea. I like the fact that if I play this Discover Lands Unknown, then I can go and play yours, and it's a completely different game. Everything there will surprise me and be different and unusual, and I can go play someone else's and same, and maybe I'll see a few of the same things, but I'm never quite sure how the game is going to work out. That's fine. That's cool. I like that idea a lot. That does work against the game slightly though, because it means it's hard for the game to tell a cohesive, strong story. My game had a story of some sorts, but I thought it was fairly generic, fairly obvious, and I just was, I mean, it wasn't that strong of a story because it's only told on some of the cards. And you're lost in the desert in my first one. Okay, I've seen that many times in games before. And it wasn't because you the cards are going to be randomized and stuff. It didn't come together as strongly as I want it to. And again, comparing to Seventh Continent, which has this huge in-depth story, this story was not nearly as interesting. It's kind of very generic. And unfortunately, that is the problem with Discover Lands Unknown. It is super generic. It's very light. And I'm not opposed to a light game. But this game, literally, you move around, find things, roll dice, and fight stuff. The combat system is so lucky. It's crazy lucky. You roll two dice and see if you hit, and see if you get hit. And then if you fight an animal or some creature or something, it will run away. And then they'll chase you at night. You can go get them again. And it's very unsatisfying. And who thought the idea of player elimination in a game in 2018 from a company that I highly regard has player elimination in it? That's insanity. But the biggest part of this game that I did not like was at the end of scenario one. So this is a bit of a spoiler, but I don't care. So then in scenario one, you had to do something. I won't explain exactly what was going on. I'll try to be as nebulous as possible. But you had to beat a boss, right? Okay, fine. So we're playing our first game. So Sam went up and he's fighting this boss. And I'm like, all right, I'll help you. So I come in and I play cards to help him. And he, he wins. It was a fierce battle, but he wins. Okay, fierce by a few lucky rolls of the dice. He wins. Great. Do you know what happens? Sam wins the game. Me and the other players still have to win the game on our own. That guy that he beat came back to life. We have to fight him again. Or else we lose. And only Sam wins. Wait a minute, why did I bother even helping him? What kind of weird, sadistic trick is this? Even Sam wasn't satisfied with that outcome. Because from now on, we're never going to help each other. That, I, 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 I'm still mind boggled that that even existed in this game. It's not a cooperative game, it's a semi-cooperative game. Semi-cooperative games almost never work. It only takes one slightly selfish person to ruin them. I don't feel like I'm a selfish player. I'm there to help us win. And when Sam won, I was like, yay, we won. No, only you won? Well, then why did I help you? I felt very cheated by that. Now, this game can be played solitaire, so I tried it solitaire. I played through the whole game. Man, it doesn't really change much. It's just running around, finding stuff, fighting. Running around, finding stuff, fighting. The fighting never gets really that interesting, and it's really lucky. Sometimes you just get really unlucky in some... The little thing comes up and pokes you and you die. Other times you get really lucky and man, I killed some big thing or man, I happened to stumble on this and this was exactly what I was looking for. And the fifth scenario where you run around attacking each other and then you can find some special items that will help you, like a big combat. Uh, I, just to clarify, there are 
dozens and dozens and dozens of combat games where you can run around and fight each other. The, I don't need one where I'm going to go around and explore and, and occasionally slap each other by rolling two six-sided, twelve-sided dice. That's that's that that that's was just like thrown in there so that the game has some replayability. The game literally has four scenarios, not five. That fifth one is nonsense. As you can tell, not a fan of the game, which is unfortunate because my hopes for this one were really high. I want it to like it so much. I do not like player elimination. I do not like the semi cow up. And I just struggled with the fact that I went through this story, which wasn't that interesting anyway, and it was just luck. Oh, there's something. Ha ha. That's not what I'm looking for. Whoa, this is exactly what I need. Oh no, I'm not near water and I keep getting struck with needing to find water. Or oh ho, I got 10 water and now I can just drink all I want. And ah, there was some interesting ideas in it, but Seventh Continent just does it better in every single way. You could say, well, this one's a lot easier. Sure. But I don't, it almost feels, see, I'm, I'm struggling to be like, hey, I'm with Fantasy Flight. I think the unique game is interesting, but it almost feels like they deliberately designed this to be a disposable game that you play through it. You're like, okay, done. Let's buy another one, play through it. But I don't think the stories are compelling enough that that's going to work for them. But that feels like that's what they were trying to do. So in the long run, as an overall thing, I really can't recommend this. I don't know who will really like it that much. I mean, I guess I've... I shouldn't lie, I went online and looked and there are some people who really are enjoying it and that's fantastic. I'm glad you guys like it. But for me, I just can't get it. The simplicity does bothers me a little bit, but not too much, but there's so much of it. There's not a lot of really cool like, wow, that's neat. It's like generic. It's like if you come if you're in a desert, what might you fi expect to find there? There's a little bit of supernatural stuff. I'm cool with that. The supernatural mixed with the mundane mountain lions and stuff. There's I can't say much more without spoiling it. The special abilities of your characters might never come into play, or they might come into play a lot. The items you build might be the exact item you need, or it might not. It just felt like this unique system, which I'm really on board with again, hampered this game too much. Now, I'm not against the unique system at all. I really like Keyforge. Watch my review of that. I think that game's a fantastic game. Discoverlands Unknown, though, just has too many problems for me to enjoy it. Dice Tower Judgment, very disappointing.